Hey everybody, um, welcome back to my channel again and uh, I think yes, uh, it's been quite a long that I've posted a video, just been busy with the, some personal commitments really. So alright, uh, so we're gonna get back and uh, we're gonna start with the uh, piston engines. Alright, so uh, the earlier playlist was the subsonic aerodynamics and now, uh, from now on we're gonna discuss uh, piston engines all right so before i uh, really uh, start in this uh, video in this but there'll be two videos on the piston engine here we'll be discussing construction how actually the piston engine is uh, constructed the next one will be obviously the working so first let's understand how the piston engine is uh, constructed all right so i hope you guys can uh, now see uh, this is a uh, uh, a picture that I've uh, made, uh, you know, for construction purposes, for easier understanding. So here, uh, as you can see, there are two in valves, inlet and outlet. This is called TDC top dead center, BDC the bottom dead center. Then we have uh, something called the shank, and uh, we have the crank pin here, crank shaft here, camshaft. The propeller is attached to the crank shaft, of course. Then the magnetos and the spark plug is here. Tippet clearance is here and then there is swept volume that is between TDC and BDC and then there is something called uh, clearance volume alright so clearance volume is the leftover part and then we have the gudgeon pin here and this whole case this whole piston is kept in something called as the crank case alright and uh, this is the connecting rod here now this image uh, is just for your reference uh, I'll explain to you each and every term in the coming uh, few minutes so just uh, keep a note of this uh, image maybe you can just come back when I refer to these terms alright so let's uh, get started so as I've showed you the image already so I'll start with the definitions so first one is uh, bore right bore is the inner diameter of the cylinder all right second is the BDC that is bottom dead center now what is BDC it is the extreme end extreme end to which the piston travels it is close to the crankshaft okay it's at the bottom third one is the TDC that is top dead center okay so this is the same extreme end to which piston travels travels but this one is closer to the combustion chamber okay now the um, my idea of this video is to uh, make you first guys understand the first the uh, uh, parts and uh, of the piston engine basically so construction is what we are going to discuss and then in the next video is what I'm going to discuss how actually the piston engine works so kindly just uh, pay attention how what are the parts and uh, definitions that are related to the piston engine the so stroke is the distance covered by the piston okay that is TDC minus BDC all right fifth is swept volume swept volume is the area of the piston head basically piston into length of the stroke all these are really important very commonly asked in exams and in interviews anywhere anywhere else actually next is clearance volume volume of the combustion chamber simply clearance volume combustion chamber okay now what is total volume total volume 
swept plus clearance again a very important point all right total volume what is the total volume of the piston then compression ratio compression ratio so this is what total volume all right divided by clearance volume all right so now uh, i'm going to discuss uh, these uh, eight points that i've just explained through the diagram so that you guys can again uh, you know refer to it so uh, what what all we just discussed is the clearance volume this is the combustion chamber here so this is the clearance volume all right swept volume is the volume that is swept, swept by the piston the area of the piston into the length of the stroke all right stroke is basically tdc to bdc okay that is stroke and uh, we also discussed the top dead center that is the um, extreme part that the piston can move all the way up this is closer to the chamber combustion chamber and bdc is closer to the crankshaft all right and bore is the diameter of the cylinder okay and uh, we discussed total volume so total volume is obviously swept volume plus clearance volume now there's important uh, thing the uh, last one we discussed was the compression ratio so compression ratio is the total volume that's the top to bottom total volume by your clearance volume this volume so this is the compression ratio which is very important in piston engines to determine efficiency okay so next we are going to discuss uh, next point that we are going to discuss are highest useful compression ratio that is ninth i think yeah h c u c r this stands for highest useful compression ratio now uh, i was t t telling you about compression ratio right that is total volume by clearance volume now highest useful com compression ratio is the value value of the compression ratio compression ratio which above which the fuel detonates what is detonate what is detonation detonation is a, a explosive uh, blast that sends out shock waves and it is not desirable all right so when a, a engine detonates uh, there is a puffy gray smoke that comes out so that is not desirable so this value hucr is every fuel fuel type has its own hucr so this determines what is the maximum compression useful compression ratio that can be obtained out of this particular engine running with that type of fuel this is a very important uh, uh, hucr is important in terms of determining the efficiency of a piston engine all right now we're going to discuss some efficiency uh, points these are very important as well please note them down volumetric efficiency okay so this is the weight of the mixture induced into cylinder okay by the whole thing by weight of mixture that could fill the cylinder so sometimes actual weight this is the actual this one is the actual weight so actual weight of the mixture induced into the cylinder by the theoretical weight of the mixture that could fill in the cylinder at normal pressure and temperature at normal temperature and pressure this into 100 will give you the volumetric efficiency of the engine 11 thermal efficiency now this is uh, something obviously you understand is uh, related to heat so this is heat converted into work by heat energy available within the fuel 
so theoretical uh, energy that is available in the fuel and actual heat that is converted into work into 100 will give you thermal efficiency of the engine another way to put that uh, thermal efficiency is is work output by heat input into 100 so basically same thing here heat converted into work so work output that is given out from the engine and the heat energy that is input through the fuel that is also thermal efficiency 13th mechanical efficiency the mechanical efficiency is bhp by ihp into 100 brake horsepower by induced horsepower into 100 now uh, th these are few uh, definitions uh, and I like I'll explain you guys uh, the BHP and IHP in the uh, next video and uh, let's discuss a uh, few more points about uh, construction of uh, the piston itself okay yeah so uh, by the way piston engine uh, runs on the Ottoman cycle uh, which we will be discussing in the next video of course so construction of the piston engine few points to note down construction of the piston engine I hope you guys have uh, remember the diagram that I showed it to you, showed to you and uh, so we're gonna continue discussing on that on those lines itself so piston is a closely fitted metal plug and has piston rings around it to make it airtight all right so it's a, it's a circular thing and the piston is placed like this and there are rings around so that so that it's airtight okay now there's something called as oil scraper or oil control rings now what do these do is uh, these are just to uh, scrape the oil during the downward movement of the piston to minimize oil consumption and preventing oil escaping into the combustion chamber we don't want oil in the combustion chamber all right so these are oil scrapers or oil removers or oil control rings that you can call these are used to minimize the oil consumption and when the piston is moving downwards it uh, avoids you know oil escaping into the combustion chamber so there's a that the in the diagram that I showed you in the crankcase the oil comes down and it's stored again and it is reused in the piston engine again now this uh, as I showed to you already inlet and exhaust valves few important points about them so valve springs are used for closing of the valves very important what what is used these are the valve springs that are used for closing of the springs now again very important question diameter of the outlet valve is always greater than diameter of the inlet valve why because we want to improve the volumetric efficiency and the exhaust the gases that are released should be pushed out as soon as possible so the diameter of the out valve, outlet valve exhaust valve or you could call are is always greater than the inlet valve so exhaust or the outlet valve is sodium cooled okay this is sodium cooled because the uh, gases that are emitting are really hot so the exhaust valve gets hot heated up quickly so hence it is sodium cooled okay now connecting rod so connecting rod point A it connects piston and crankshaft okay B now uh, this is uh, the how do you remember what connecting rod looks like so the main portion main portion of the connecting rod 
is between bigger and smaller end and is called the shank it's in between the connecting dog that's that is what shank is now very very important point please remember this one what does the connecting rod do connecting rod rod transfers reciprocating reciprocating or linear motion motion of the piston to rotary motion of the crankshaft this is very important question it's always been asked connecting rod transfers reciprocating or linear motion that is when it moves up and down this is linear motion right so when it moves up and down it's linear motion but the crankshaft is rotating anti clockwise or clockwise so that is rotary motion so that is what the connecting rod job is okay okay let's go to the next part that is crankshaft so crankshaft uh, all the cylinders what I showed you was one cylinder so there are generally four cylinders or depends on the type are connected to the crankshaft okay so all it could the pistons could be placed in the opposite direction or horizontally opposed or dip, depends on the type of the engine so but all the pistons or the all the cylinders are connected to the crankshaft okay what is what does the crankshaft do it also it is because since connecting rod was the one so uh, connecting rod was the one between the uh, piston and the crankshaft so similarly this uh, crankshaft as well all linear motion does linear motion that is coming from the connecting rod through the piston of course to rotary motion it continues the work of the connecting rod okay important points to note down here are a four cylinder engine needs four throw crankshaft with four crank pins okay in the diagram i had also already showed you about uh, what are crank pins and uh, one stroke equal to two throws these conversions could be asked so just remember okay so uh, we'll discuss about uh, camshaft okay so in camshaft uh, two strokes of the camshaft two strokes of the camshaft gives you 180 degrees of rotation camshaft uh, rotation and camshaft in, in two strokes you get 180 degrees of camshaft rotation and uh, four strokes will obviously give you 360 now in terms of crankshaft if two strokes are there it goes 360 degrees and four strokes goes 720 degrees okay and the rotations are here half one one and two so this is a relation between camshaft strokes and rotation crankshaft strokes and rotation okay now uh, small note about radial engines though they are not really uh, uh, important as such but uh, in terms of uh, piston engines uh, radial engines I'll just give you a quick uh, you know brief uh, idea so uh, in this there are odd number of cylinders arranged radially in a barrel shaped crankcase so it would be something like uh, this barrel shaped and there will be you know pistons arranged radially and they are always odd number of cylinders so these are five as you can see okay 
now this has more drag but air cooling is way better is better and uh, now this uh, here there's a knuckle pin that is there uh, it's not really important to know but uh, the rod this is the master rod that goes through between so the rod is connected with the knuckle pin so that's about it and um, uh, also let's let's uh, I'll give you an idea about horizontal horizontally opposed uh, the Cessna 172 and 152 have these aircraft the uh, have these engines they're always even number cylinders that's all you need to know rest is the same even number cylinders they'll be the four two four. Cessna 152 has four and uh, even the 172 has the four uh, cylinders even basically Alright, so that's all about construction for now. Uh, we will discuss the Ottoman cycle and the proper working of the, uh, you know, the piston engine in the next video. So uh, if you like the video, please uh, do like it and uh, share it with your friends and everybody. And uh, I'll be coming up with more videos soon. Uh, so let's hope. See you guys.